that is the cheapest wide body supercar in the world. And I'm gonna show you why modifying your car is not worth it. Well, maybe it is worth it to you, but it's not worth it financially. And I'm gonna show you exactly why with this ideal supercar. Because this little R8 started life as a Gen 1 V8 R8 in Daytona Gray Pearl. And it came with the highly sought after six speed manual transmission. Cause you know, save the manuals. And now it's been turned into a wide body masterpiece that I got on the cheap, yes. Right here, this is one of three Audi R8s sporting this body kit. And these custom three-piece wheels, well, let's just say that uh, they aren't cheap either. In fact, really nothing about this build is cheap. And yet, I just picked up this clean title, one-of-a-kind R8 for, well, cheap, like really cheap. I think I pretty much stole it especially when you consider how much has actually been done to the car. So in this video, I wanna show you everything that has been done to the car and how much it actually costs to complete. And by the end of this video, you may just reconsider altogether ever modifying your car again. Because when I tallied it up the first time, I pretty much lost my breath because it was a lot. And if you're new here, this is our first supercar for the channel, Girth Brooks. And this is ideal, so please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And buckle up, and let's go. Okay, so one of the first things I wanna do is just put everything into perspective because if this car right here was completely stock, just a regular old Daytona Gray Pearl Gen 1 Audi R8 with a V8 and that manual transmission with roughly the same miles, I use the ideal car strategies to look at comps and here's one that has comparable miles and you're looking at spending roughly $75,000 because this one just sold on Bring a Trailer for that much when you include auction fees. And yes, that still is an awesome deal on a great car that fits perfectly into the ideal car strategies, which you can definitely learn a lot more about up here. But that thing is no Girth Brooks, which is a lot like nothing else. So if this thing was $75,000 just a little while ago, then how much extra did it cost to make it look like this? Now, I know for a lot of you guys, this end, the rear end, is your favorite end, and it is part of the beauty of this Prior Design 850 wide body kit. And quite honestly, this is a statement piece. There are only three Audi R8s in the USA sporting the full Prior Design GT850 wide body conversion. And the main reason why is that, well, uh, getting one of these is pretty much astronomical and going to ruin your bank account. It costs roughly 20 $25,000 just for the pieces for this wide body kit. And this thing is completely badass. And it's made out of high quality, lightweight Duraflex fiber reinforced plastic and carbon fiber components. And you get a new front fascia with a carbon fiber splitter and revised intakes that gulp in the air to the mid engine. Plus you get this crazy wide hood, aerodynamic side skirts, a new bumper with this super sporty diffuser. And the result? is something that looks like, well, it just took a wrong turn at the racetrack and ended up on the street. Yeah, I don't know about you, but if I close one eye and then I squint with the other, I mean, this thing looks like a race car. And to say it's breathtaking is an understatement. And it's hard not to stare, to stare at the fitment. See, the tough thing about these kits is that the fitment, the body panel fitment, is only as good as the body shop that's installing the kit. And let's just say that these prior design kits aren't really known for fitting like a glove. You can see that gap might be a little bit different than that gap. And as we come around, ooh, that gap. And holy mackerel, that's a, that's a ledge you could walk off of, maybe even jump off of. So as you can tell, it is a body kit and you know, Fitment is not Audi spec, but it's not bad. And when you're, uh, let's keep moving back. Okay, so when you're about here, looks pretty good. Wouldn't you say? No, all joking aside, this is a wide body kit and any kit isn't gonna fit as well as just an OEM car that's never been wrecked. So although it's not perfect, it's good enough for the girls I hang around with, girl. Plus one other thing that you have to factor in is that this kit, it needed to be prepped before it was installed. So that meant it needed to be painted with single stage black paint 
And building this thing overall, as you can expect, it wasn't cheap. And it's a supercar, which isn't cheap to begin with. So this is a high-end kit on a high-end supercar. Yeah, it's not cheap. And we'll get into labor at the end of this video because it's gonna blow your mind. But as we talk about fitment, well, look at that fitment. Yeah, the wheels, the lack of the gap. Looks good, doesn't it? And these forged three-piece wheels finished in this beautiful gold is a throwback to the most exotic sports and race cars of the 1970s and the 1980s. And yes, I know that they might not be everyone's style, but if you know the history of the wheel, well, specifically this design, it makes sense that it's on a build like this. Plus, HRE takes pride in their wheels, custom building these by hand to give it the fit and finish that it deserves. But yes, as you can expect, these do not come cheap because each one of these wheels is $3,000, I'm just kidding, 3,000 bucks. And so that equates to $12,000 in just wheels, which is kind of mind blowing. I mean, most of the cars that I've owned are less than the set of wheels on this car. But I gotta give a shout out to Toyo Tires because, well, as you can tell, way down here, this supercar already came with Toyo Tires. And Toyo is the one that challenged us to put some all-terrains on our 911 that were 16 inches and well, if there's a will, there's a way. We somehow figured out how to do it. And no, because we bought this car doesn't mean that we are selling the 911. That is staying in the ideal stable. But uh, Toyo, if you're watching this, we do definitely need some new tires for girth because uh, we need something a little bit more sticky because uh, this suspension is gonna need all the help that it can get to stick to the road confidently. Now, Air Ride, it's come a long way in the past decade, but it still isn't as good as a quality coilover setup. But <laughs> I mean, just, just look at this. No static ride is going to look like this. Or, uh, or if it does, speed bumps are probably one of your biggest concerns in life every single day. Yeah. That sucks. But with Air Ride, specifically AccuAir, which is on girth, you can really have the best of both worlds. You see, right now, I'm on level one on AccuAir, which means I'm completely aired out. All I gotta do is either turn the key, and now I'm on level two, which is the normal driving height. And then, if I wanna be on level three, all I gotta do is hit three, and then, now, I'm ready for speed bumps. Look at that. It's that simple. And then of course, when I show up to the car show and I want to do the coolest party trick that there is, hit level one, and then you just get out like a boss. Now I know some of you are curious, how the heck did I do that? Well, there's a little bazooka up here in the frunk that uh, helps out getting this thing up and down and up in. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. Now that is the compressor and that is where all the air obviously is and lives to, to pump up the airbags and lift her up. And if you take a look at that fitment, holy mackerel, that's literally uh, cracking this. It's, I should probably stop doing it so low, but it looks so freaking good. By the way, this hood, <laughs> just look at that thing. It is ginormous. I mean, girth has the biggest hood in the game, or at least one of the biggest, yeah. See, I haven't cracked that one yet, but you can see with the Toyo tires, yeah, I need some new ones. It's uh, wearing out a little bit. Anyway, so since we haven't talked prices in a little while, to throw air on an Audi R8, you're looking at roughly $3,000 for the complete kit plus installation. And when you're in mode two on this little AccuAir thingy level majiggy, as you can see here, you wanna have some oomph under the hood, which this has a couple of go fast items under the, I don't even know what this is called. The hood? The bonnet? Uh, the, the back trunk thing. Oh, finally. Now, as you can see, this is a piece of art from Audi, and this is a mid-engine car, so literally the best handling platform that you can have, and it really makes it a joy to drive, especially with this V8 that's slightly lighter and a little bit more forgiving than the V10. Now, do I wish it was a V10? No. I mean, yes, of course. I mean, that would be really cool, 
but the V8 is actually a little bit better driving experience. And with the V8, because it's the 4.2 liter with 420 horse, and let me show you something. In here, where the, where the men in blue would not have a clue, there's a little hiding compartment, and there's one on that side as well. Now, I'm not trying to draw any conclusions, but do you think that Audi was building the ultimate getaway vehicle? And back to the engine, you guys. So this has the Eurowise cold air intake, and as you can see, there's two of them. And the reason for that is two is probably better than one, I guess. But no, this intake not only sounds great, but it also looks fantastic. And then as we come down here, we have the Eurowise exhaust. And this thing makes this V8 sing all the way up to the 8,000 plus RPM redline, and it sounds exotic. Now, the air intake is gonna set you back roughly 1,500 bucks, while the Eurowise exhaust is gonna set you back roughly 2,600, and then, obviously, installation costs on top of that. But it's definitely worth it, because a stock V8 R8, it doesn't sound that great. So, money well spent. Now, this coat hanger here, I mean, wing is not actually part of the prior design wide body kit. Instead, it's actually a PPI Razor carbon fiber wing with a Vorsteiner wing stand from a BMW M4 GTS. And if you're looking to snag one of these for your R8, well, you're gonna be set back roughly $2,000 or so for the setup. And literally just drilling it into uh, your rear deck lid is free. I, I Thing. And as we admire this wing from afar, what do you guys think? Do you think we need to go bigger? I think it just looks a little small on how crazy and wild Girth Brooks actually is. So let me know down in the comments if you know you think a bigger wing would do this car a little bit more justice. Because personally, I don't know how much I love the wing, but uh, I do. I love this wrap. You know, I don't know, but one thing I love is this wrap. And let me explain, because I don't think it really is everybody's taste, but that's why Baskin and Robbins has 31 flavors. And it's grown on me because I know how hard it is to design a wrap. In fact, YouTube girlfriend, when she was designing the wrap for Tina, the Jeep, it took about a month to put that all together. And that's because it just takes a lot of time and effort and thinking. You know, I mean, you just don't know what it's gonna turn out like until you see the render on the Jeep. Then you go, you. And I bet they had a couple of you moments with this thing before they got it to where it is today. And the vibes that it gives me, well, it gives me this very old school Audi LMS feeling. And I think that that's why it works so well with those vintage HRE wheels. You see, to do a custom design livery like this and have it installed, you're looking at least spending 6,000 bucks, if not more. And what I do love about these wraps is that, well, they easily come off if you want them to come off, and it's just printed. So as you can see here, there's this cool looking scrape on this side. You got the old Quattro badging right here. And just overall, you really can play around with what colors and I mean, just look at how unique this design is. I know it sounds like I'm fanboying a little bit, and I am because, I mean, this is true art on the car. But regardless, A plus for effort on executing this build overall. It is a great starting platform for what we're gonna be doing here on Ideal with our first supercar. Okay, so when you add up all those parts, it comes out to $52,000. $100 for everything on Girth Brooks. But then you have to factor in labor as well. And so I'm gonna just throw in another 23 bucks. And that includes everything from getting the body shop to put on the panels to painting the panels, making sure it looks good, installing the exhaust, the cold air intake, and all the other bits and pieces. And I bet that estimate is a little bit low because this build took almost 24 months under the knife. And so, if you add everything up, the cost to build this car was 
$100. And the cost to just purchase a completely stock Audi R8 that's comparable, $75,000. So if you can do simple math and carry the one and maybe do a little logs or something, well, you can see that total invested in this car is over $150,000. Now, what did I buy this car for? $62,180, which at the time when I bought it about a month ago was the cheapest wide body supercar available in the world. So <laughs> what did we learn today, guys? Mods do not add value to your car, but they can bring you happiness. And I mean, this car at this point, it's art. And it's a great starting point for what we're gonna do here at Ideal to take it to the next level. Well, not the next level, what am I, what am I saying? We're gonna turn it up to 11, baby, which we're gonna have to do with your help on the channel. So in the comments, let us know what type of livery or wrap you wanna put on Girth Brooks. Also, do you think that we should ditch the wheels and put something else that's a little bit more contemporary on it? Or maybe just change the color. And also the exhaust, well, yeah, it sounds great, but it could sound better. I'm thinking uh, straight pipe. Maybe a uh, center exit exhaust. And when we were trying to pick the first supercar for the channel and the first supercar that I owned, you guys voted and you guys voted for this. So now it's your turn to vote again by commenting down below and letting us know what you want us to do next to Girth Brooks. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And also if you're new here, my name's Danger. This is Ideal Cars. Subscribe, turn on that notification bell because we have a ton more supercar content coming at you real quick. Also, if you wanna learn how I leveled up from a cheap BMW all the way up to a supercar in just 24 months and how you can too, because I really want you to, I just had to prove out the concepts, which they do work check out the Ideal Car Strategies, I'll link down below, and see if it's something that works for you. But regardless if it does or it doesn't, promise me one thing, keep living the Ideal Lifestyle.